Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Let's talk about a fight that delivered for us, but, right? Because Josh Taylor, the winner, is an up and coming fighter, right? And because, hell, we're gamblers. We need to look at both sides of the play. In other words, the good and the bad. Let's take out a, uh, let's put Josh Taylor uh, under the microscope. And let's talk about the things I liked and the things that concerned me in his win over Victor Postal. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now first let me say this, I was impressed with Josh Taylor's drive. We'll call him JT, right? Um, I was impressed with JT's drive. He's a warrior from start to finish. He keeps an opponent working from start to finish. If you're an older fighter, and Postal was 34, Taylor's 27. If you're an older fighter, you really have to be prepared physically to match Taylor's level of energy in the last third of a fight. That's the difference here, folks. Right? I thought Postal starts the fight better than Taylor does. I thought Postal takes away Taylor's jab. I thought Postal creates a mobile pocket that Taylor didn't know what to do with, right? But we get to the later part of the fight, Postal inexplicably couldn't figure out Taylor's counter left hand, even though Taylor's a southpaw, right? And the fight really turns on the knockdown. Now, let me say this. I understand the judges had the fight much wider than I'm suggesting the fight was, right? The fight was in Taylor's backyard, Scotland. The fans were yelling for Taylor throughout the fight. I had the fight a lot closer than the judges did. I'll agree that when Postal wilts in the last third of the fight, he wilts big time. He looks tired. Taylor's able to come in and grab him and muscle him around. And by the end of the fight, you get the feeling that Taylor won the fight. But the fight was close. Understand, Postal's only lost to two men. Terrence Crawford and Josh Taylor. Right? But what I want people to do, and Taylor obviously is on the world stage now. He's going to get very big fights. He's unbeaten. Right? He's the gold medal winner at the Commonwealth Games. Right? But here's what concerns me about Taylor. Now, first, understand we think of Taylor as a young fighter. Right? The truth is that Taylor right now, I believe, is older than former heavyweight champion Joseph Parker. Right? Taylor's 27. So the things Taylor has some issues with, right, might not be the kind of things that he can fix. Because what I've found is that unless you're a heavyweight or a cruiserweight, if you're fighting at 140 pounds and you get to your late 20s and you don't have certain things figured out, it's very hard to learn them. Some of us are, dare I say, hardwired, right? Some people can pick up nuances early in the sport. Former middleweight champion Sergio Martinez doesn't start fighting until his late teens. And then you notice he has the ability to hide his upper body and make adjustments mid-fight, right? That's rare. Understand Floyd Mayweather got his first professional title in his very early 20s, right? Mike Tyson. Understand, Josh Taylor's in his later 20s. Right now, let's talk about some things that concern me. The first is that Taylor, a tall guy, and keep in mind, both of the guys are tall here. 
Taylor, a tall guy with a very long reach, very long reach, had his jab taken away from him. Right, I believe this is the first fight of Taylor's I've seen where Taylor just could not land his jab with any regularity. Now, it's a little bit shocking because Victor Postal isn't exactly Sugar Ray Leonard in there, right? He's not marrying foot speed with a lot of upper body movement, right? Postal's not, you know, a guy who looks like he has his head on a swivel, who has an upper body that just looks like it's hard to find in the ring, right? And Postal is tall. In other words, he's not a shorter guy who, if he bends at the right angles, is very hard to find. So I was a little bit surprised that Postal here, just off of moving around and backing away when Taylor came after him, right? Creating what I call a mobile pocket. In other words, Postal's not standing there stationary where he could get hit with a jab. No, Postal is fainting a little and then backing away, right? Both guys are up on their toes early. Both guys are bouncing in the early rounds. Somehow that was enough to deprive Josh Taylor of his jab. Folks, that's a red flag. I, maybe I need to get a red flag so I can wave it here. But that's a red flag, right? That concerned me. Let me say this too. As long as Postal, and Postal against 34, was close to 100% physically. In other words, the problem with age is, yeah, when you're 100%, you're A+. Plus. But then you'll notice, as the event goes along, your energy is draining faster than the 27-year-old you're fighting. Right? Guys who play basketball on weekends, they'll notice, hey, when I'm 100%, I'm better than the guy sticking me, the teenager sticking me, right? He, he doesn't have all the skills I have. But then there's a part of the basketball game where the teenager just looks faster than you, right? Your knees start to hurt. Your ankles start to hurt. You're wheezing, hoping for a second win. Now, as long as Postal has his first win, in my opinion, he's the better fighter in this fight. Right? So Postal, when he has his legs, and that's just for the first half of the fight, when you see Postal bouncing, right? When you see Postal able to turn away from Josh Taylor's left hand, and again, Taylor's a southpaw, right? Postal has the upper hand. So you have a mobile pocket the first few rounds. Postal's moving. Right? Taylor is moving. The guys don't want to set up shop and have a shootout. When you have the mobile pocket in a fight in Taylor's backyard, Victor Postal is taking away Taylor's jab. He's winning rounds. He has Taylor confused. Postal's landing his jab. When Taylor tries to get inside, to hit Postal's body. Postal is switching it up. Either he takes a step back so he's too far for Taylor to hit his body, or Postal smothers Taylor, right? Taylor comes in trying to get to his body. Postal moves too close to him. So Taylor then can't get his shots off. So Taylor's not landing a jab. In the early rounds, Taylor is not landing body shots in the early rounds. Postal's landing his jab in the early rounds. Postal has Taylor walking into shots. Right? Let's talk about another thing that concerns me. Taylor's tall. Right now, what I want you to do is to compare Taylor and I'm going to pick greats here because they have unique styles, right? I need to mention guys here 
who the public knows. So let's compare Taylor to the Klitschko brothers, right? I know it's a different weight class, but we're trying to highlight certain things. Now, Vladimir Klitschko, big punch, big punch, right? Taylor's left hand's big, folks. Klitschko had a big punch, but you notice Klitschko always seemed able to land his jab, didn't he? Right? Then you notice, too, when Klitschko's landing his jab, he has a lean. You even notice the lean more with his taller, older brother, Vitaly, another guy with power, who has a lean. So when you're fighting these guys, it's hard to find them. Right? In other words, you're fighting a tall guy, and the tall guy reminds you that he's tall. Right? The tall guy's keeping you at the end of a jab. You aren't even able to get inside on the tall guy. One of my favorite fights ever, Roberto Duran, a guy who normally lived inside, against Thomas the Hitman Hearns, a tall guy who's sticking a jab, then throwing power punches. He annihilated Duran. To this day, I don't think Thomas Hearns knows what Duran's inside game looked like because Duran couldn't get inside. Now, Josh Taylor at his height, with his level of athleticism, needs to use that height a little bit better, right? In other words, what an ability to lean does is it allows a fighter to have slow rounds. In other words, Fiddley Klitschko is fighting someone, Shannon Briggs, right? And Shannon Briggs, who has power, is there trying to get to Fiddley. And because Vitaly is able to lean and he has a base, and because he's forcing the opponent to reach for him, and because he knows that he's only vulnerable in certain places, he doesn't want to get hit on the chin, he doesn't want to get hit on the temple, right? Think Vladimir Klitschko against David Hay. Leaner guys, even against guys with hand speed, are able to protect themselves. Vladimir Klitschko often would have his hand like this, protecting his chin, ready to catch a shot to the temple. And he's able to save energy. In other words, you're leaning, you're not running. So your legs aren't getting tired. As I said in the pre-fight video, Josh Taylor just doesn't look like he knows how to lean. Right? He's leaning forward, folks. He's giving away his height. He's not leaning backwards. He's not slowing down rounds. Right? Having guys come find him, and as they do, that's when he throws a jab, hits the guy throws that counter left hook, has an opponent walking into punches, right? Think about all the opponents. Remember the Chris Ariola, hyper-aggressive front foot fighter against Vitaly Klitschko fight. Vitaly Klitschko has Chris Ariola walking into shots the entire night, and he's not running. Now, Josh Taylor doesn't maximize his length. A guy with his hand speed and his height and his athleticism should be able to use all of that to force a Victor Postal to have to reach for him in the pocket. And understand, when you're a counter puncher like Josh Taylor, right? Many of Josh Taylor's punches are in response to the punches of Victor Postal. Right? When you're a counterpuncher like Josh Taylor and you have a guy reaching for you in the pocket, that creates openings. That gives you countering opportunities. Right? So, Josh Taylor couldn't land his jab. Josh Taylor didn't use his height. And keep in mind, I, I thought Taylor had a great fight. I thought Taylor won the fight. But he's now on the world stage and we're going to dissect him a little bit. Right? Taylor, to me, doesn't really use length well. 
Now let's take the length dynamic one step further, right? It's the difference between very good and great, right? When Taylor, who can move, is backing up, Taylor isn't firing shots back, right? In other words, Taylor is like David Hay was against Tony Bellew, right? This is late Hay, right? This is David Hay dealing with an Achilles injury, I'm convinced, is much worse than the fighter and his camp have told the public about, right? Because David Hay backing up is usually dangerous. But against Tony Bellew, especially the last fight, you noticed David Hay backing up didn't have any defense, didn't have any offense. Right now, understand against a guy with foot speed or a guy with savvy. Let's say Josh Taylor were fighting Tony Bellew. I believe Tony would wait for the opportunity for Taylor to start backing up. Then I believe Tony would run over there, just like he did against David <laughs> run over there, throw a combination because he would know. As offensively blessed as Taylor is on his front foot, he is not offensively blessed on his back foot. So, one of the infamous fights of our life, the Ali Liston rematch. Sonny Liston is pursuing Ali, the phantom punch, right? By the way, if you look at Liston's head moves, Liston clearly is hit with something fierce, right? Just look at his head. Marlon Brando couldn't do an acting job on that level. Let me just say this. As Liston runs at Ali, Ali, who's on his back foot, leaning back, right? He's leaning back, right? Ali style, Klitschko style. He's leaning back on his back foot, backing up. Ali has the coordination and timing to get off the punch that drops Liston, right? I didn't see any punches like that coming from Josh Taylor as he backed up. Now, if Taylor wants to take on the Terrence Crawfords of the world, right? I know Crawford's moved up to 147, but Taylor's a tall dude, right? If Taylor wants to take on the, Josh, the Terrence Crawfords of the world, if he wants to take on the Mikey Garcias of the world, and yes, I'm naming the biggest names because Taylor is now unbeaten guy on the world stage, right? If he wants great fights, these are the kind of guys he's going to have to fight, folks, right? If Taylor's going to fight a Terrence Crawford, he needs to be prepared to have some offense as he's backing away. Otherwise, he's going to end up like David Hay did against Tony Bellew, where Tony's there. You remember Tony gets up on his toes. The knockdown where Hay falls face first on the canvas. <laughs> Tony gets up on his toes to get Hay coming forward. Hay comes in, is offensive. Then as he's backing up, oh, that's when Tony's chasing him and loading up on punches. Right now, Josh Taylor... as athletic and as dynamic as he is, is really, dare I say it, a guy who leans forward, who's best on his front foot, coming in throwing counters, right? He's very accurate with that left hand. He can throw the left hand straight. But who Josh Taylor is, who he sees himself as, is a slugger on his front foot. That's who he is. Right? So you see him moving early in the fight. The reason he's losing rounds is when he backs up. There's no offense coming back at Victor Postal. When he comes forward, Postal knows that's when he's going to be offensive. Postal backs away or Postal comes in close and clinches in. Let me say this too. 
the knockdown. Right? Well, first, let me say this. Postal hurts Taylor badly. Badly. In something like the seventh round. Now, in my pre-fight video, which is still up here on YouTube, I mentioned the fact that on film to me, because Taylor is a tall guy who leans forward, I mentioned that I thought he might be vulnerable to uppercuts. Folks, an uppercut almost did him in in this fight. The best punch, Victor Postal lands. Look at the tape, is an uppercut. Taylor is naked. In other words, he wants to fight you. He comes in and he's guns blazing. But he doesn't have an arm bar. This isn't Evander Holifield against Mike Tyson, a guy who threw uppercuts, right? Evander has an arm bar here. No, Taylor's naked here. Folks, at the Terrence Crawford level, you can't be naked like that. You just can't be. Let me say this too. Postal obviously wilts to the point where the pocket becomes established. In other words, it stops being a mobile pocket where the guys are bouncing on their toes, right? Postal loses the ability, it's 34 year old legs folks, he loses the ability to move back when Taylor moves forward, right? So. What happens is the pocket becomes defined and Taylor then starts feasting in the pocket. He wants to trade with Victor Postal, right? As Postal fires shots after the seventh, as Postal fires shots, right? Taylor, who is a gifted puncher, is able to get off counter hooks. Now, let me say this and I don't say it lightly. One of the ways to deal with a counterpuncher is to not give them anything to counter. Right? So you have fights. One of my favorites is Ali Jimmy Young, a fight I personally thought Ali lost. Right? Jimmy Young, realizing that Ali's a counterpuncher, doesn't throw punches at key moments. It, it, it gets so bad, Ali begs Jimmy Young, literally motions to him to come over and fight him over by the ropes because Jimmy Young understood that Ali needed someone to lead. Right now here, the best punches, the best punches that Josh Taylor throws are counters. He wants a shootout. He wants Victor Postal doing something other than turtling. Right? Being defensive. He doesn't want that. He wants the openings created by Postal himself throwing punches. So it's a shootout in the last third of the fight. Right? All I'm saying to you is Postal could have made this fight a bigger problem for Taylor given Postal's fast start. If Postal slowed down the rest of the fight. In other words, Instead of firing back on Taylor, what if Postal would have reserved his energy a bit, right? You know, not thrown a lot of shots, gotten defensive, decided to himself, you know what, I just had a good seventh round. In this eighth round, let me be defensive and take the round off. Isn't that what guys like Bernard Hopkins have done? Haven't you watched fights where guys have taken rounds off so they could finish a little bit stronger, right? I thought Taylor was a bit too easy to grab. I thought Taylor was a little bit too reliant on counters during shootouts. That would work for him against this opponent, right? Taylor was the better athlete. So late in this fight, Taylor's the one landing big shots. Taylor's the one who gets the knockdown, right? Taylor's the one who Victor Postal is holding on to, right? All I'm saying is, 
how many Vladimir Klitschko fights, and I'm naming Hall of Famers here, guys, guys who will be in the Hall of Fame, in my opinion, how many Vladimir Klitschko fights, how many Vitaly Klitschko fights have you seen where these guys have slow rounds, right? Having a slow round is an art form. Right? It's when you look at a guy who's a counterpuncher and you say, hey, I'm not going to throw that many punches here. It's when you look at a guy and you say, you know, I won the last round. I should be ahead on the scorecards because of a fast start. Right? Let me be primarily defensive here. Let me clinch a lot. Or this guy's having a problem with the mobile pocket. Let me dance away from him. Or even... This guy has a problem with offense on his back foot. Let me run at him. I've seen Bernard Hopkins do this. Let me just run at him, get him on his back foot. I'll be safe because this guy doesn't throw a lot of shots when he's on his back foot. His back foot offense isn't his front foot offense. So let me just wrap up by saying this. Against a certain type of opponent, Right, an opponent who doesn't move that much, who will allow Josh Taylor to leave the pocket, plan his attack, and then come in with an offense. Right, come back into the pocket at his own choosing, ready to counter certain shots. Right, an opponent who doesn't allow that dynamic to happen, who is able to fight even smaller than Josh Taylor. And understand, Taylor's a big guy. So as Taylor's leaning forward, as you can imagine, certain guys can actually lean and get down lower. Right? Manny Pacquiao, Sean Porter. Right? Guys like that would give Taylor a hard time. I don't know how Taylor... Postal is a righty. Let's say Taylor's facing a lefty in Manny Pacquiao. A lefty with fast legs. Let me point this out too. I expect Pacquiao, Pacquiao to beat Matisse. I believe because Pacquiao is so sudden, because Pacquiao, in my opinion, has the faster hands, I believe Pacquiao would give Terrence Crawford a run for the money. Right? Manny Pacquiao... The guy who's a politician most of the time, who's a part-time boxer in his late 30s at this point, I believe would give Josh Taylor all he could handle. Because look at the punches that drop Victor Postal. Right? How would Josh Taylor land that counter left hand against a southpaw who's shorter like Manny Pacquiao? Right. Also, as Taylor leans forward and gives away his height, how would he deal with Manny Pacquiao just naturally being shorter than him and more elusive? Right. So I know in this video, I've been critical. I'm actually a fan of Josh Taylor's. Josh Taylor delivered for us. Right. But let's just say if I'm his matchmaker... I'm going to be careful here on who I put him in the ring with, right? At 27, you know what they say, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, right? Unless the guy's a heavyweight or a cruiserweight. That's my addendum to that, right? Josh Taylor is a guy who wants to trade punches. He wants to land big counter left hands. He doesn't want to lean back hide behind a jab. In fact, against a mobile opponent, he has a problem landing his jab. Right? This is a guy who wants to be on his front foot, not on his back foot, where he doesn't have the offense. In my opinion, he needs to stay away from fighters like, and we're just talking about styles here, savvy, cagey, older veterans who've been around the block like Tony Bellew. Fighters who can get low in the pocket and who love to throw uppercuts and body shots 
like Chris Eubank, right? If he's fighting a guy who doesn't move that well, who's not going to create a mobile pocket, or who's in his mid-30s and who can only create a mobile pocket for the first half of the fight, then Taylor's athleticism, his hand speed, that great left hand, they're going to rule the day, right? But be wary of him against seasoned jabbers who know how to fight slow rounds. Slow round guys, guys who can slow it down behind a jab. Think the clinch goes. Think Ali, right? Slow round guys would give this guy problems. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Congratulations to everyone who pocketed off of Taylor, who was a big favorite over Postal, right? And he delivered as a favorite, right? He's a young, unbeaten fighter. Let's just not put him in the ring with a Terrence Crawford or a Mikey Garcia just yet. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.